attention attention to this now. In the Gauteng legislature, it was recently revealed that the Provincial Department of Sports, Arts and Culture spent 16 million to two service providers to administer 13.2 million rand in COVID-19 relief grants. Now, this was an effort uh, to provide relief to athletes and artists in the province, but a bidding process to choose the two companies was apparently not followed. The department said that uh, Business Arts South Africa and the Gauteng Sports Confederation were appointed to pay the grants as they were appointed as sector stakeholders. Well, for more on this, so we're joined by the Gauteng Sports Arts and Culture MEC Mbali Shopa. MEC, very good morning to you. Uh, firstly, let's deal with the question about whether or not your department has questionable relations with the two entities that were appointed to administer these funds. Good morning, Claudia, and hello to all your viewers. I mean, listen, that statement is, is really sad and shows that a member who is entrusted to represent society can go to the extent of lying even on basics and information that has been given to him. So mm. let's clarify the following, that BASA and the Gauteng Sports Council are entities and bodies that represent the art sector and also the sports sector. So that is why we work with them. So if there's a, a suggestion that there's questionable relations, I'm not sure what the suggestion would be, that we should not work with the bodies that are responsible for the sector themselves. Because who else do you work with if you don't work with the Housing Sports Council, mm. as an example? So there are no malicious relations and so forth. Our relations remain purely professional because there are bodies that represent the sectors that we work with. Mm. Okay, so the other question related to that MEC is why does the department need service providers to disperse funds? Does it not have an internal department that deals with uh, distribution of funds? And that's a very good question, which we had wished that Member Shabalala would have asked if he didn't understand. But what is evident is that he, he just doesn't understand basics of how government works. So you know that we have a finance department. And how our finance department works is we pay people that have a personal number. And for those who are not in government, what a personal number is that when you become employed by government, you're given a code. Mm. And that code is what then we utilize and our systems utilize to pay you off your monthly salary. So that is why we say it's a personal number. Now, because we're dealing with a relief grant, which is a once-off, it would be impossible for us to create personal numbers for everybody. But what we worked with uh, together with the Treasury was that because there's already bodies within the province, just as they are within national, it's easier to work with them, and that's how you would then disperse your funds. Mm. For example, the National uh, Department would have used the National Arts Council, which is the NEC, and the province would have used BASA, and equally would have used the Gauteng Sports Council, because those are the provincial bodies that represent the entities and the stakeholders that we represent. Yeah. All right. Let's deal then with uh, the actual monies here. How much, to your knowledge, was paid to these service providers then uh, to disperse this uh, 13.2 million rand? So what we had was an SLA, which is a service level agreement. And what is entailed in that is that they would take 10% of whatever they disperse as what would then be their administrative fees, but also it would cover the various bank-related costs that they would incur. So as you know, that when you have to disperse monies to 3,000 individuals, mm -hmm. that institution will have to absorb bank charges. So that's an that 10% is what would cover that, but also their administrative fees, because you're dealing with lots of paperwork, lots of individuals, crucial as ensuring that these are the people that are correct and are the ones that must be, must be given the money. So that 10% is what is the agreement, and that is regulated. Yeah. So that's why we would have used these bodies and the money that they would have received. So initially, we gave them 16.5, uh, 16, 16 and out of which they had to make payments to 2,201 individuals. Um, give, if, if I remember the numbers correctly, and that would have amounted to 13.2. Now, Member Shavalala, this is where you didn't understand simple mathematics. If we're saying we've given 16.5, it means the 13.2 has to come out of that, and equally out of the 16.5, it's not just the 13.2 that must come out of it, it would have also been the administrative top cost. But 
now when you look at that, you'll immediately pick up that there's about three point something that is outstanding. Mm. We expect them to hold on to that to what is remaining because we're still dealing with the appeals process. So that when we deal with the appeals, then they're able to process those two. And we further indicated to him in the questions that he had asked that because out of the appeals that came out, an additional seven, uh, 799 individuals had to then also be taken through. So what the appeals process covered individuals who um, they had documentation outstanding and so forth. And because we're working with the housing audit services, we had to ensure that everybody submits all documentation because we appreciate that as a government, we have to be accountable for every penny. Mm. So we can't just give individuals um, money if they don't give us the proof that, one, they are artists or they are athletes, and that they have been able to use income and how the, the pandemic has affected them. So we require certain documentation for us to be able to process their, their, their applications. And that's why we had a second phase to deal with the appeals for those that had information outstanding and so forth, so that we give them a chance to still submit those and then we could process them through. So ultimately, what was given then to the body was just over 17 million. Uh, and that went um, to the artists and the athletes themselves. And then on top of that, they would have been added what was they 10%. Yeah. Well, let me see. You would have seen uh, in the last couple of weeks some artists fighting with uh, the National Department of Arts and Culture over the very same funds that were meant to be uh, given to them. For the record, out of this 17 million, now that you mention has finally been uh, dispersed how much did each individual athlete or artist get so that if they do come back to say no the department says it distributed x amount but actually we got nothing how much did each person get so the final amount of individuals within sports and arts that we paid for was three thousand people and each of them got three thousand. I mean, sorry, six thousand. And this is because you know National was covering bids from various individuals who really what would regard as people that are formalized. So these are people with entities in place and so forth who are recognized and, and etc. So it would have been your, your more prominent artists who would have been able to qualify for the National one. What we looked at was your community individuals. Because we felt it important that we don't forget about them. So what I mean by community individuals, these are people that train your community soccer teams, your community netball teams, that teach choirs, that do aerobics in communities and so forth. Really the low-end individuals, these are the ones that we were covering. And that's why our process had to be so vigorous, because anybody could have come to us and claimed that they're an artist or that they're a community development worker. But we needed all sorts of documentation to prove that this is, is what you are really doing. Um, and they needed to document that we needed affidavits and so forth. Oh, so right. it's a, a huge process because of the grouping that we were focusing on. So it, look, it sounds like it's a little, but understand the, the audience that we were targeting. All right. Uh, MEC of uh, Sports, Arts and Culture in Gauteng, Bali Shope, thank you very much for your time.